Hello and welcome back to The Neighborhood. My name is Andrew, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about Assassin's Creed Mirage. Assassin's Creed Mirage is an action-adventure game developed by Ubisoft Bordeaux and published by Ubisoft. It is the 13th major installment in the Assassin's Creed series, and the successor to Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Set in 9th century Baghdad during the Islamic Golden Age, the story follows Basim, a character first introduced in Valhalla, a street thief who joins the Hidden Ones to fight for peace and liberty against the Order of the Ancients, who desire peace through control. Originally envisioned as an expansion for Valhalla, the game was reworked into a standalone title to expand its scope. The design philosophy behind Mirage was to return to the series' roots by focusing on stealth, parkour, and assassinations over the role-playing elements featured heavily in recent installments. As a result, the game is much smaller in scale than its predecessors and combines elements introduced in them with those found in earlier installments of the franchise. If you have seen the video I did where I ranked all of the games in the Assassin's Creed series, you'll know that I'm a fan. I'm the kind of fan who enjoys the lore and appreciates the modern day storyline that so many people in the games industry wish would just go away. I say all this because I want you to understand where I'm coming from as I talk about Mirage. There's some stuff here that I like, but for the most part I'm pretty disappointed with this game. So let's start with the positives. I really enjoyed the setting and location that Mirage takes place in. Baghdad is extremely well realized and the city is a lot of fun to explore. It looks great too. You can tell that a lot of effort was put into designing the city with parkour and climbing in mind. I was also a fan of the smaller scale. I've enjoyed the massive recent entries in the series to various degrees, but being confined to a single city with a manageable size was refreshing and one of the better parts of Mirage. Along with the setting, I really liked when the game would give me environmental puzzles to solve or locations to explore. Some of the large buildings or deep caves that you find yourself in would offer up interesting challenges to solve. Usually the reward was mediocre, but I did appreciate the exploration that it took to get there. While exploring was fun, the main gameplay component of this game is stealth and it is the same classic stealth that you would expect from a game in this franchise. You're ducking in tall grass, hiding in closets or behind corners, and perching above enemies who conveniently never look up. Yes, stealth hasn't evolved much since the first games in the series, but personally, I enjoy Assassin's Creed's simple approach to stealth. It's fun because it isn't overly punishing or complex. There are some tools and upgrades you get as you play through the game that can alter the stealth gameplay slightly, but the fundamentals are the same as they've always been, and to me, this was fine. Mirage also sees the return of the wanted level. If Basim is seen killing people or stealing things, he will accrue a wanted level that has three tiers. At the highest tier, you'll be pursued by some ridiculously busted enemies that are tough to kill, and any regular guard who sees you will attack you on sight. Just like in the older games, you can lower your wanted level by removing wanted posters around the world, or paying a town crier to clear your entire wanted level. This mechanic adds some stakes to your behavior and assassinations, but isn't too overbearing. Another small gameplay mechanic that adds to the experience is the pickpocketing mechanic. All it is, is a simple timing game that is more difficult for better loot, but it makes the act of pickpocketing a lot more fun. And the last thing on the positive side is just that I am still a fan of the core loop of Assassin's Creed games. I enjoy the stealth, I enjoy the parkour and climbing, and I really enjoy synchronizing a waypoint for fast travel and then jumping into a pile of hay while the eagle cries in the distance. Does this game do anything more than the bare minimum? No. But do I still just like the basic formula of Assassin's Creed? Yes. Now it's time to talk about the bad and ugly parts of Mirage, and I can't think of a better place to start than the main character, Basim. I didn't really like Basim in Valhalla, but he was just a side character. 
until you get to the end of the game that is. After I beat that game, I was more interested in where Basm's story was going to go, but I still didn't really like him that much. In Mirage, he is the biggest nothing of a protagonist the series has had so far. His entire personality is having nightmares and doing assassin stuff. The game advertises itself as the journey of Basm from street thief to master assassin. But aside from the game telling me I had leveled up to master assassin, I would not have been able to tell based on the way Basm was behaving. There are a few quests where he gets to show a little bit of personality, but for the most part, he's completely dull. Along with that, the twist about him that the story throws at you in the final minutes of the game felt clunky and rushed, like the developers remembered last minute that this character was supposed to be tied into the greater lore somehow. Outside of Basm, the entire story of this game is a mess. The opening chapters of Street Thief and Assassin in Training were somehow both extremely slow and dull while also not being long enough to give any of the character moments or relationships any time to develop and have meaning. Once you get past the intro sections and into the meat of the game, the story gets segmented into different investigations. The idea behind these is that you will follow leads that take you to a member of the Order, and you will kill them. Once you have finished all of these, you will learn who the leader of the Order in Baghdad is, and you will kill them. On paper, this seems fine, but because you can do these investigations in any order, the storylines feel shallow and segmented from one another. And there's one investigation you probably should do first, because if you do it last like I did, all of the conversations between the characters feel really odd and out of place. I also could not tell you anything about who I was hunting as Basm, or why I was hunting them. I felt no connection to any of the characters that I had interacted with, and felt no motivation for why I was fighting the Order. The game just said to do it, so I did it. This led to a hollow story with no meaningful character development or stakes, or anything that makes a story enjoyable to experience. On top of Basm's story being forgettable, there's no modern storyline in this game whatsoever. I feel like this is the first for the series, but let me know in the comments if I'm forgetting something. I know the opinions on the modern story are mixed, but I am a fan personally. It's one of the things that makes this series unique, and with the way that Odyssey and Valhalla incorporated the different timelines, it felt like the developers of Assassin's Creed were taking it seriously again. This could still be the case. I know Mirage is a smaller game, and it isn't meant to be moving the plot forward, but not having any reference to the modern story just felt weird to me. Let's move out of narrative stuff and talk about gameplay. This game is aiming to bring the series back to its roots with a focus on stealth. To do this, the developers decided to create one of the worst combat systems in a game that I've seen in a while. You swing your sword by pressing the right bumper. To swing it harder, you hold the right bumper. That's it one button. On defense, you can dodge and parry. If the enemy flash red, dodge. If they flash white, parry. If you parry successfully, which you will because the window is huge, you can usually get an instant kill. What this means is that early on you're getting knocked around as you adjust to the controls, but once you've got them, you can face an entire army by simply parrying and insta-killing enemies. Yes, there are some heavy enemies you need to smack in the back over and over, but other than that, you've got it. I understand that combat is supposed to deter you from using it and encourage you to use stealth, but even so, it's one of the most lackluster and cheesy combat systems I've seen in a while. Towards the end of the game, I kind of just gave up on interacting with enemies as much as possible and just ran past them to my objective so I wouldn't have to engage with it. But surely the combat gets better as you level up and unlock skills, right? No. The skills in this game are all pretty basic, and in some cases, there are things that you start with in other Assassin's Creed games. But the skill tree isn't the bad part. Remember earlier when I said I enjoyed exploring, but usually the reward wasn't very good? A lot of times, your reward is a new outfit, or a new weapon. These weapons have very simple attributes that don't affect the gameplay that much. They can also be upgraded by finding diagrams and materials. The upgrades don't change anything cosmetically, and don't change the stats in any meaningful way. So other than giving you something when you open a chest, these systems feel tacked on and pointless. If they are going to have these types of things in the game, 
They should add to the experience. Otherwise, just leave them out. At this point, I'm going to address something you've probably noticed in the gameplay on screen. While the environment in this game looks pretty great, the characters look awful. Everyone in this game looks like a lifeless puppet. This only compounds the underwhelming story. Also, every time Basm or another assassin goes to pull up their hood, the camera pans away or switches to a different shot because it was apparently too difficult to animate a character putting a hood over their head. Ubisoft really needs to step up their game when it comes to character models. They haven't looked great in a while, but Mirage really stands out. Sure, I didn't help the situation by booting up this game for the first time after finishing Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty, but still, Ubisoft is one of the biggest video game companies currently. They can put a little more effort into making their characters look like people. The last point I want to touch on is the glitches and jank that I experienced while playing Assassin's Creed Mirage. The game would stutter when I was in large environments where lots of enemies were present. It crashed on me multiple times. And a typical play session was full of small glitches such as NPCs not going where they're supposed to or not having the button prompt to interact with them or the combat music continuing to blare long after the combat encounter had ended. But outside of technical issues, the game is just janky. Climbing would often end with Basm being stuck in place, or leaping off the wall for no reason, or he would stick to things he wasn't supposed to. Hitboxes for assassinations are a mess. Sometimes you can stab the air three feet away from an enemy and watch them die. Other times you would slide across the floor while the enemy would pop up from a sitting position to standing so you could stab them. Things like this really pull the experience down and make it feel like you're playing a game that was half-assed and rushed to meet a deadline rather than made with care for fans of the franchise. I'm giving Assassin's Creed Mirage a C. Some people could argue that it deserves a D. But because it is a functional game, and because I have a soft spot for the series, I am sticking with a C. But I'm very disappointed to be giving it this grade. The idea of Assassin's Creed returning to its stealth roots and providing a shorter, concise experience is promising and sounds great in theory. Unfortunately, it was handled in pretty much the worst way possible, and what we ended up with was a heartless shell of a game that could have been great. I'm still a fan of Assassin's Creed, but I'm apprehensive about the future of the series. I hope that future titles do a better job at capturing what makes this franchise great, because Mirage sure didn't. Those are my thoughts on Assassin's Creed Mirage. What do you think of the game? How about Ubisoft in general these days? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and leaving a like to help the channel grow and let me know you want to see more content like this. If you want to hear more of my thoughts on video games, check out our podcast. And with that, I'll leave you with a reminder to stay friendly, gamers.